Hello, in this video we're going to look at sequential move games. So here's a sequential move game. Player 1 starts the game up here at this node, player 1's node, and player 1 can play left, and then the game would end up over here where player 2 could play left or player 2 could play right. If player 2 plays left, player 1 gets a payoff of 10, and player 2 gets a payoff of 5 where bigger numbers are better here. If player two were to play right, player two would get zero and player one would get zero. Uh, this game could also end up here where player one would play right and ends up over here at this right node, far right node for player two. And at this particular node, player two could play left, player two would get a payoff of zero, player one would get a payoff of zero, on the other hand, if player 2 played right, player 2 would get a payoff of 10, leaving player 1 with a payoff of 5. So what we want to do is we want to solve for the equilibrium of this game, or the subgame perfect equilibrium. So here again is our game, our sequential game. What player 1 goes first, and then player 2 makes his or her choice. So we're going to solve for this subgame perfect equilibrium by something called backwards induction. And we're going to start basically uh, not at the beginning of the game, but basically sort of at the, the end of the game. So we're going to assume we're at player two's left node. What is that? That means we're going to be over here. Here's node one for player two and the other node for player two. We're going to be at the left node. So if this game were to end up here, what would player two do? Well, player two wants to get the highest payoff. If player two goes right, player two gets zero. If player two goes left, player two gets five. So player two only cares about his payoff. So if the game were to end here, player two would choose left, player two would get a payoff of five, and player one a payoff of ten. So as we just stated here, player two will choose left. A payoff of five is better than a payoff of zero for player two. Now let's assume that we're at player two's right node over here. What would player two choose to do in this case? Again, player two wants to get the highest payoff. If player two chooses right, player two gets a payoff of 10, this number in red. If player two went left, player two would only get a payoff of zero. So 10 is bigger than zero. Player two prefers bigger numbers. So if the game were to end up at this right node here, player two would play right. So player two will choose right. A payoff of 10 is better than zero. Player 1 knows how player 2 will respond. If player 1 plays left, player 2 plays left, and that would give a payoff of player 1 of 10. So player 1 knows that if player 1 plays left, player 2 will play left, and in that case, player 1 would get a payoff of 10. On the other hand, player 1 knows that if, uh, if player 1 played right, if he played right, player two would also play right, and in this case, uh, player one would get a payoff of only five. So what does player one want? Player one wants the highest payoff, and that is going to be by playing left. So player one prefers 10 to five, so player one will play left. Game ends up in this left node here. Player two would then choose left, and that is going to be our sub-game perfect equilibrium. 10 and 5. 10 for player 1, 5 for player 2. Uh, this is also a Nash equilibrium. Uh, neither player has an incentive to change its strategy given the other player's strategy. So given that player 1 played left, player 2 wouldn't want to change their strategy to right. Okay, um, And likewise for uh, player one, player one wouldn't want to change your strategy from left, uh, given what uh, player two is uh, playing. All right, uh, one other thing I want to talk here briefly about is cheap talk. Uh, player two prefers this payoff over here of getting 10 instead of 5. So player two may try to convince player one to change his strategy from left to right. So player two could threaten to always play right in an attempt to convince player one to play right. Should this threat scare player one? So here's sort of the idea. 
player two says, I'm always going to play right. So player one goes, okay, if I play left and player two plays right, because player two is always going to play right, I'm going to get zero. Well, that's no good. If player one plays right, player two is always going to play right, then I'd get a payoff of five as player one. And since five is better than zero, player one then says, well, okay, uh, I, I'm going to play right then. I don't want to, I don't want to get zero. However, we're going to argue this is a cheap threat. If player one were to play left, will player two actually play right? So if player one played left, if player two plays right, player two is, they're harming themselves. Uh, they could have played left and got five, but instead they played right and got zero. So this is really cheap talk. This is a non-credible threat. Player two will not play right if player one plays left because player two will be hurting itself. So player one can ignore that, uh, that threat. It's a non-credible threat. All right, uh, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.